time to solve it is, is now. Make sure if you do something here, it's done safely in the Amanda Health Study, because that's what it's all about. Uh, first of all, I'd like to commend everybody for coming here tonight. Um, if we had done that a few years ago and had this kind of support, we would maybe be in this mess. Um, I didn't go to the meetings. I just took everybody's word for it to be fine. Uh, one meeting I went to, the, the wind farm, uh, went out and whined and dined the farmers who were getting the wind turbines. And a couple weeks later, uh, us people at the Seven Soft Properties, they took us out uh, to place the car called Governor's Inn, free food, some beer, and some slides telling them everything's going to be fine. So we discussed them, and uh, one of the owners is a big uh, company in Canada, so we figured we'll take care of us. So I didn't go to any meetings that Sandy went to. Uh, I just trusted them. Uh, big mistake. Uh, so I'm very glad to see you are all here listening because it could affect you someday. So I'll try to make our story a little bit brief as so we got into it a little bit later. And uh, uh, my wife and brother was getting sick in our home uh, in the spring of 2008. And uh, sounds funny, but I was getting itchy. I was going crazy. I thought I had bugs in my house. Uh, threw away our bed, threw away our mattress, threw away the carpet, had the house exterminated. There were no bugs. And apparently it was like, as they would say, uh, electrical pollution, uh, moving the hair in your ears, your eyebrows, and it was just starting to drive you nuts. And my wife, Brenda, she got to the point where she wanted to come to the house. And it's kind of, kind of strange because it's kind of like uh, these electric dog collars, I say, that the dog only goes so far and then it stops. And that's the way Brenda was. She just stood at the door and just didn't want to come in. And uh, finally, when it got to me, I started to believe something was wrong. Dave, I uh, knew he did electrical pollution testing. And one day, he was at my hydro pole outside for some reason, unannounced, didn't know why. And he had a stranger with him as the manager of the wind farm. I started to explain to Dave what was wrong in our house. And uh, he tested it. But when the wind farm found out that we had this problem, that, that was July 6th. 2008, they said they would put us in a hotel until they buried the collector line, which is 92 feet from my house, plus I'm in the middle of 38 turbines, and the transformer station is five eighths of a mile behind our barn. So uh, Brenda stayed at Cape Carton until the Friday before Christmas 2008. At that point, the cable was buried and said, work your cut off, come on home. I stayed in the car some of being a stubborn man and feeding uh, approximately 550 cattle. I felt I had to get home. Brenda came home for two weeks and she was just going nuts. She couldn't take it. So in January 8th, I bought a town was in Carton and she moved to King Carton. And again, I was there some, but being stubborn, I thought I had to get home. Her side effects went away that she's out of the environment. I was getting worse. Uh, I could hardly walk, my feet were so sore. And Dave kind of kidding me said, well, cows get ulcers on their feet if they're straight bullish. Well, I went to the hospital and they took my blood pressure. And it was 217 over 124. We did that two nights in a row. And my family doctor told me I had to leave the house or it wasn't going to be good. I went to a foot doctor and she said, your heart is healing because your blood pressure is too high. So that was middle of February. I had a swallow of my pride and moved to King Carton also full time. Um, now I have my son and girlfriend and two year old daughter that's in concession over. They were very the line in front of their place. They are now being put in a hotel Inky Carton paid for by the wind farm. Um, plus, my son's girlfriend is pregnant, and the vibration of her not born. So they're probably getting some type of a problem, but we keep getting a runaround on tests, waiting. We're delayed now about three to four weeks from the last sound test. And the thing is, Ministry of Environment Treatment and Testing, they refuse to come down. The 
people do the testing of the people who are causing the problem. The fox watching the chicken house, so to speak. So it's very discouraging. We have zero support from our, from our member of parliament, uh, who is also uh, on the committee for Bill 150, which we did a presentation on. So it's, it's pretty discouraging. So I don't know who your member of parliament is here or what party they're in. I shouldn't make any difference. But I should be lobbying them to be looking into it for you. Because our nightmare that we're living through could happen to you. And we're not here like a, a wind company offering you $8,000 a turbine. We're here telling you about what's happened to us because we trusted them. And I wouldn't want any stranger to go through what our family has gone through. And also, what the real estate, my real estate agent told me, uh, because of the disclosure clause, you can't sell your property. In other words, our place is unsellable. So you work your life to hell at home. And now it's worth nothing. Okay, uh, we don't want anybody to think that this is something against the farmers who get turbines. Uh, one of my closest neighbors who in France have five turbines and a transformer station. And uh, they have about 2,200 acres of land and they have capacity for more wind farms. Uh, he told me the other day that he was approached, and he said no. Until the health issue is solved. Uh, by knowing uh, our family, who's been beside him our whole lives here and there, there's something to it. He believes. He's a businessman. Money, money blinds everybody, including myself, and we all thought it was going to be a great deal. Um, so I, if somebody had the, the opportunity to put a turbine on their property, they're not going in to do something bad to you. I would suggest they'll make sure they know the health effects also. You know, because our, our neighbors aren't bad people. They, they, they're they getting $60,000 a year to make me sick. That was not the intent. Everybody has to just know the information. And don't be blinded by the dollar. Because that's what I did. I thought about the neighbors, and I didn't bother going to the meetings. I went and had my stage and my few peers went to watch the slides. You know, I thought it was great. But uh, don't be blind to the money. Money isn't everything you'll find out of it. Because once your home's worth nothing, and your family is, is pretty broke up from all the fighting, and nobody comes to my place but the mailman, they won't walk in my house ever again. You know, it's, it just tears your life apart. If, if you're a farmer, farmer. But uh, if there's some way that they can hold things up till the health study is done, uh, it'd be beneficial to you and beneficial to the landowners in the long run. Because if they have a turbine on their property, it is causing health. That's not going to put your property value of the farm in. It's going to put it down. For $8,000 a year of land doubling every 10 years, uh, I think you might be running a deficit. Okay, thank you very much.